Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another FIFA 21 video where today we have got something pretty special. We're going to be showing you seven tips that are going to help you improve in FIFA 21 and especially in foot champs. Now, there's a lot of people obviously would like to know how they can improve as a player and how they do want to get more wins in foot champs. We've got many great tutorials on the channel, so make sure you do go and check them out. There's some really good ones there that are going to help you out. If you do enjoy the content, make sure you do drop a thumbs up. It would massively help us out. Now, without further ado, let's go straight into it. Tip number one, it is to track and follow the runner. Now, this is super, super important. You really want to make sure that defending is difficult in this game, as we all know. It's a very difficult thing to try and master, but one thing that you really need to try and avoid doing, especially in defensive situations, if your opponent is, you know, two on one with you and they're in, you know, maybe a two on two situation and you just need to not pull your centre backs out of position. Always make sure that you follow the runner as well, whether it's on the wing, whether it's following the run through the middle of the pitch, because that is the most dangerous run. I would much rather you, you track the run than really go and try and pressure the attacker. At some point, you will have to pressure the attacker and try and get some pressure on him. But the most the most important thing you remember is to track the runner. Do not let that runner have free space. Do not let leave him on his own. And just don't bite on the one two. Something I see a lot of people do is they bite on one two passes all the time. It's something that people do when they play against me as well. And you know the higher up in skill that you go, you don't see it as much. But at the lower end of FIFA, you do see it all the time. Just do not bite. Do not jump into one twos. A quick one two. Anyone who's like very average at the game, you can just get in really easily. So if that's you, just really try and avoid doing that because that will help you out massively defensively. Tip number two would be to use some of the basic and meta skill moves. Now we've got a good video coming out very, very soon. It's just taking a little bit longer than I would like to get it together and to just get it how I like it because I want to release great content, not just average content. Now basic skill moves are things like ball rolls, things like the heel to heel, Things like roulette, they're all really great skill move. Fake shot, step overs, the running fake shot. They're all kind of they're they're kind of the main skill moves, you know, that are basic that you need to master. They're really the ones that you need to focus on. So you just maybe need to spend a week or two just practicing these skill moves. Practice them in, in non-pressurized environments. Just try and try your best to practice them as much as you can whenever you can at the best possible time. And just that is something that's going to really elevate your, your level because if, if you don't use skill moves, you will hit a level in FIFA that you can't get beyond. You know, simple basic passing can get you so far in this game, but at some point you need to add skill moves to your repertoire. And that is something that is, is, is how you combat playing against really good players. So you do need to make sure you're practicing those skill moves, the fake shots, the ball rolls, the step overs, things like that. It's just going to really elevate your game to the next level. Tip number three would be to play the simple pass. Now, something that I do even myself sometimes, you know, I, I and, and a lot of people do try and do this, is we, as FIFA players, we're always trying to be maybe a little bit too cute, a little bit too clever all the time, rather than just playing the simple and obvious pass. And sometimes that pass may be just to pass the ball back to our fullback, rather than trying to force the ball into our striker, you know, playing it into the midfielder that's open, rather than playing like a cross-field ball or Whatever it may be, just sometimes it's it's a good thing to play the simple pass. You know, people might see see it as being boring. I see it as just being smart. You know, why would I try and force the ball into a into a strike or a tight window that's not there when I can play the simple pass and just retain possession? And by retaining possession, you're going to force your opponent to make an error because he's he's going to might get impatient. He's going to try and come out and close you down, and that is how you can just open your opponent up especially if they're sitting a little bit deep so play that simple pass don't be aggressive now tip number four is something that is very very important something that we kind of specialize in on this channel it is obviously game plans tactics formations now having multiple game plans is a must you you cannot you cannot go into foot champs with just using one formation expecting that to be beat everybody and just and just dominate everybody you have to have different formations for different situations you know you can have one formation which is the one that you normally use the one you go into you can have another formation where if you're losing a game you need a goal you need more of an attacking formation so have one of those have one of your game plans set as your attacking game plan have another one set that's maybe a defensive game plan and you want to just try and hold on to that lead have one that's just good for doing that if you want to have another one that is just for you know just a, just a change because sometimes you can be playing like for me I'll be playing my four triple two 
and it's not working so i switch to my 4411 or sometimes that's not working i'll switch to my 442 you have to have multiple game plans don't just go into the game with one tactic one set of instructions one formation and expect it to win you've got to be able to adapt and, and know when something's not working just like if a player's not working you don't just leave them on for the whole game if a guy is not working for you you sub him off you get someone else on you have to do that with your formations you have to have different game plans that suit different scenarios tip number five is something that i would say is the most controversial that a lot of people do struggle to accept and it is to keep your head and hold your composure now for me this is something that i noticed a massive difference this week you know i just managed to obviously the previous week i think it was the first week in foot champs um we, we put up a little post on our on our page to say we kind of lost it you know we all do we all do we all get a little bit angry sometimes at this game because certain things happen that obviously uh, frustrate us and last week i just went into the weekend league and i just was calm i just i just thought you know what who cares if, if if i lose if i concede a goal if if something happens who cares you know you have to have that composure because if you if you lose your you know if you lose it you are just gonna lose and and just keep getting worse and you're not gonna win so it's just having that who cares if, if i lose this game so what it doesn't matter like you you have to almost have that about you and and remember that in a game if you concede a goal don't just go crazy just this if you can see the goal after six minutes even if it is a bit bs you still got 84 minutes to get back into the game so you can then analyze the game once it's finished but if you lose it in the middle of a game you know you you miss a chance because the keeper makes a great save or a deflection or a bl ai block or something don't just be like oh another ai block that's stupid just go okay you blocked it and then just move on because if you if you the, the two different things you notice a massive difference i did this week i i held my composure so well this week and i started 15 and 0 i've never started 15 and 0 so it makes a huge huge difference so remember try and keep your head just hold that composure tip number 6 is just again more of a tactical advice um it's just not sprint in midfield now sprinting in general is not even necessarily in midfield you you don't sprint in midfield, of course, but you don't want to be sprinting in defence. You don't need, you don't want to be holding the sprint button in defence because if you're holding the sprint button in defence. That is a big no-no because that's something that's going to really make defending super, super difficult. But even in the box, you, you you want to really be sprinting as little as possible. The only time I think it's acceptable really to be sprinting is on the wing. But if you're in midfield, you don't really want to be sprinting unless there is massive space in front of you. And you know no one's going to tackle you. But if someone's maybe 10, 15 yards off you, you don't want to sprint. Because if you take a touch forwards, if your opponent decides at that moment that that's the moment he's going to press, you're going to meet in the middle. And then it's just, you know, the RNG for tackles and who's going to come out with the tackle. So make sure you try and avoid sprinting as much as possible. And try and just be, be walking and jogging with the ball. And, and it just makes a massive difference. Because you then naturally are a bit more composed on the ball. Because when you're sprinting, everything's kind of moving at 100 miles an hour. When you're not and you're kind of not playing as quick, and you're just sort of jogging on the ball, you're just using the agile dribbling, it just makes it so much easier to read what's in front of you. Everything slows down, and then it's just so much easier to, to have a more compact team, but also be able to make the right decision and not do some of the things that we've mentioned by, for example, forcing passes into certain play, because you're able to see it a lot clearer because you're not as hectic. And then the seventh and final tip is to build the most meta squad you can possibly build. This is something that, again, I really got on board with this week. I came into some coins, obviously had a few lucky packs. We, we managed to pack Sadio Mane, as a few of you guys have seen, as an untradeable. And we've now got a really good meta squad. Now, it's not the best squad, but you there is a reason why everybody uses, for example, Furlan Mendy and Rafa Varane and Joe Gomez. It's because they're the best players. Now... If you are somebody who's going to not build the meta squads and not have the meta players, you can't then expect to not get the results. This is something that I think is a bit frustrating because I think you want to just kind of use any players and, and hope that they'll be good. But ultimately, if you're if you're not going to build the meta meta teams, the meta squads, and use the meta players, you can't expect to get the same results. Because if you you're coming up against Mendy and Varane and Gomez and Kyle Walker in defence, and you're not going to use meta strikers, if you're going to, let's say, use a gold Harry Kane, you're not going to give you, you're not giving yourself the best chance to possibly win the game because you're going in with less meta players. You know, Kane, not as fast. He doesn't have the skill moves. He's not a really agile player. So 
You need to build the best meta squad that you can. It will help you out. Is it boring? Absolutely. I do not like the fact that the meta is the way it is. It seems to be every single year. But ultimately, you do need to build the meta squads because they give you the best possible chance to win. And that is what this video has been about. It's been giving you seven great tips to give you the best possible way to possibly get more wins in foot champs. So if you take these tips on board, I guarantee you will see you will see benefits and your results will improve in foot champions. So if you did enjoy the content and you would like to see more, make sure you do subscribe. It does massively help us out. It helps us out so much. So if you could do that, it would be much appreciated. Make sure you drop a thumbs up. Make sure you do follow us on Twitter and Twitch if you do have any other questions. Let me know down in the comments section. But that is all today, guys. Have an awesome day. I'm out.